So this is our neighborhood and right away you can see that it's really lively. Oh wow, that is absolutely delicious. I mean, check out this view. This sure beats taking a bus to get around town. Now this is a seriously atmospheric part of the city. It's our third visit to Turkey and by now we've stayed in all kinds of destinations right up and down the coast. We've spent time in Fethiye, we've been to the little town of Kash. We were just in Antalya for the month. And now we're dropping a month in Izmir and wow, what a month it's been. Now Izmir is a huge city, it's Turkey's third largest and there's just so much going on here. So sometimes it's a little hard to plan a month in a really big city. There are just so many neighborhoods, so many restaurants, all of the sites. It's hard to know even where to get started. Well, we're coming to the end of our month in Izmir. So this is the time when we do our favorite type of video. We look back on our experiences and we put a price tag on it. How much did we spend? and what did we get for it? And spoiler alert, if you're looking for a very low cost lifestyle on the waterfront, you can get started by looking right here in Izmir. But before we get into all of the details, a big hello and merhaba from Izmir to all of you nomads. If it's your first time here, I'm Jillian and this is Stephanie. We're traveling the world full time and trying to bring a little more adventure into your life. So the most important part of visiting anywhere is what we do for entertainment. And for that, we always like to get started right where we're living. So this is our neighborhood and right away you can see that it's really lively. It's a pedestrian area and there's plenty going on in all directions. We've got food, we've got shopping, we've got shopping for food. In fact, it kind of reminds me of Istiklal, which is the main pedestrian shopping street in Istanbul. Wow, the crowds today are wild. I guess it's been a little bit warmer today than the past few days and everyone's coming out to do their shopping and just take a look around. Of course, if you want to see really busy, then the thing to do is get on the ferry and go across to the other side of Izmir. Izmir really does sprawl all the way around the bay and there are lots of ways to get around so you can take a cab, you can take a bus, you can even take a good old-fashioned streetcar but really I think the best way for getting around is taking a ferry because of course it's so nice to have this incredible view across the water as we head on in to the other side to take a look at some of the tourist sites of Izmir. And of course, dogs need to be all packaged up in their carriers for the ride. So we've got little Huxley over here. I hope he's nice and cozy. Well, we're here already, just a quick 15 minutes across the water from Pashayaka. Konyak Square, which is like the main square of Izmir, and you can see it's quite popular with people and also with pigeons. And behind me is the Clock Tower of Izmir, which is a landmark structure. It was designed by a French architect in the 1900s and is absolutely beautiful. Of course, we had to go see the Hisar Kami Mosque. It's another iconic site in Izmir, but this one dates all the way back to the 16th century. It's famous for its interior, which is a blend of Ottoman and European style art. So next up is Kemeralti Bazaar, and this is really the heart of Izmir. If you love that marketplace feeling, then this is where you need to come. You could just spend hours getting lost in all the little shops and restaurants here. So this whole market area is just wild. I mean, there are so many people here and it's not even a weekend. We've got tons of vendors all over the place. They've got clothing, fabric, bags, jewelry. I mean, really anything you could want, you can get right here in this market. We don't actually carry the dogs every single place we go, but there are so many people here and so much happening that it's just a little easier when they're not underfoot. seriously atmospheric part of the city. Of course, we had to stop and get a coffee in this really exciting passageway. I mean, there's just so much going on here. There are so many different coffee shops. Apparently, they all have to have red benches and red tablecloths. So we've ordered a little Turkish coffee, and it's actually our very first one of our whole trip here. So I'm going to give this a try. It's supposed to be very strong. 
And indeed, it is very strong. Wow. And they brought it along with some little Turkish delight. Mmm. It's creamy and filled with little pistachio nuts and little coconut on top. Mmm. Something very special in Izmir is the Smyrna Ancient Agora. Now, normally we'd expect to have to make a day trip to see an archaeological site of this size, but this huge site is actually located right in the middle of the city. So back in the 14th century BC, this was the center of the city, and you can just imagine it filled with merchants and people haggling for goods, and now it's an open-air museum that is definitely worth a visit. There is a whole lot of big city buzz in Izmir, so we decided to escape all of that and come to this lovely green space. So this is a place called Culture Park, and it is a park, but it also seems to be a lot of other things as well, like a conference center and an amusement park. But we're here for the greenery and all the lovely walking paths. And of course, no visit to Izmir could be complete without spending lots and lots of time on the waterfront. So there are many lovely stretches of waterfront to explore. This one is called Cordon, but we also have a nice one in our area and they just go on forever as you follow along the coastline. Of course, there's lots to enjoy beyond Izmir. In particular, there's the ancient site of Ephesus. So this is supposed to be a really spectacular set of ancient ruins just an hour outside of Izmir. So we've rented a car for the day and we're going to take a look. I've seen so many photos of Ephesus, but really nothing compares to being right here in person. So apparently we're not the only people who figured out that this is a really nice place to visit. So since it's our third time now in Turkey, I think we've become pretty experienced at choosing amazing restaurants for a really great Turkish breakfast. So this one has all the right components. We've got a variety of breads here along with some freshly made donuts. We have some healthy vegetables. We've got eggs. We've got some stewed vegetables over here, a variety of cheeses, olives, and then we have what to me is really the best part of a Turkish breakfast, which are all of the different kinds of spreads. So some of these are savory and some of them are sweet and they're all really, really good. So of course I love all the components of the Turkish breakfast, but my absolute favorite part is of course having a freshly made donut, so good. And then we just come over here and we add a little bit of this cream and then a little honey. And that is delicious. Mmm, so decadent, so delicious. That really shouldn't be called breakfast at all. It's like dessert. And the next stop is lunch. Iki yadım ekmek kokoreç, lütfen. Sorry, just a little Turkish. Yadım ekmek, tamam. Tamam. So we've decided to come down and have a kokoreç today, which is this delicious looking sandwich. It's super popular here in Izmir. It's um, actually made of the innards of lamb. So the sweetbreads and the intestines and all that delicious stuff. I'm going to throw on a couple of these peppers and let's give it a try. Oh, wow. That is absolutely delicious. It's smoky, a little bit spicy, and it's going to be delicious with this Iran. So Iran is basically a yogurt drink and it's paired perfectly with this kokoreç sandwich. Ah, refreshing. And for an afternoon snack, we're going to have some lamajoun, which is a thin dough that's been spread with a mixture of meat and herbs and tomatoes and then cooked in the oven. And I'm going to have it with some lemon squeezed on top. And then uh, I'm just going to roll it right up. Mm hmm. That is perfect. It's just thin and crispy and savory. A wonderful snack. 
And finally, we have dinner. And for dinner, we've come to a very traditional meze restaurant. So we have a lot of cold meze dishes, and then we're going to have a couple hot ones coming over as well. So the perfect accompaniment to a lovely meze dinner is, of course, having a glass of Rocky. This here in particular is made with grapes and anise. So I'll give you a big cheers, and let's dig in. Of course, we did cook some meals at home. As usual, I did a big stock up at the nearest grocery store when we first got here. You saw me doing that during our first day in Izmir video. The rest of the time, I would just head over to little specialty stores to pick up whatever we needed. We always like to have Simit in the morning, and I would just come over here to this little bakery and pick them up fresh every morning. Olives and cheese are two essentials for making those Turkish breakfasts at home that we like to have so much. And this shop has an amazing variety. There's always something new to try. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. Mm, it's good. Really good. Okay, eat yours. <laughs> uh, cheese. Cheese? Oh, we need cheese. We need cheese. I got olives, cheese, and eggs. I don't know about you, but we love pickled things. So this shop has been another great find in our neighborhood. They'll put just about anything in a jar. You can use crab. Got my pickles. And since Izmir is right on the coast, there's lots of great fish available. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick one up for dinner at our usual place. Merhaba. Okay, you can love that. Okay, to check it out. There we go, two fish. So clearly we got out and about this month and we had a lot of great experiences, but it was way colder than it should normally be this time of year. In fact, all of Turkey went through a really serious cold snap. And what that means is that it was even more important to have a really cozy Airbnb because after a day of running around in really chilly weather, we want to come home to a place that really does feel like a home. So with that, let's go take a look at our apartment. So this is our apartment building and it is very typical for the neighborhood. We're not really sure what the deal is with all of these beer crates. I think maybe it's being used as storage for the variety store across the street, but we'll take a look inside. So we just need to make our way through this really spooky entranceway. And if you want my full color commentary on what we think of this hallway and the staircase, you can check out our first day in Izmir video. All right, let's go on up. And if you're wondering if it was very difficult to drag up 50 pounds of luggage, you can ask Jillian about that. Okay, here we go, guys. Come on, Huxley. And here we are, welcome to our apartment. So the living room, this is why we chose this place. It's such a great space. The furniture is really comfortable. There's lots of room for our morning yoga. And we really like all the pops of color with the art. And then just outside, we have a nice balcony and just look at that view of the Mediterranean. The bedroom is really quite basic unfortunately the host sort of made more of their decorating effort in the living room and then the bedroom didn't get much of it now the kitchen was serviceable but it was kind of a closed in space and the appliances were really old i didn't like spending too much time in there in fact jillian had to declutter the whole thing before it was ready to be used there's like empty bottles and all kinds of sticky stuff Ooh. Fortunately, the bathroom saves the day. So I love a nice bathroom, and this one is really quite nice. Well-designed, pretty roomy. So obviously this place is a little uneven, a couple pretty nice rooms, and then the others, not so much. Well, kitchen clutter aside, I think we tried our best to make Izmir feel like home. It's always a little more work to settle into a really big city, but we eventually carved out our little corner and had a really great month here. Of course, this video is also about our cost, so let's see how much a month in Izmir set us back. For entertainment, most things we enjoyed were actually free. We paid just 27 US dollars to get into a couple of ancient sites. Transportation was $48, and that mostly covered cabs and a car rental. Those ferry rides were super cheap. Dining out, we spent just $230, and this covered dining out almost every single day. For groceries, we did a lot more cooking here than we did in Italia, but still, our grocery bill was just $300, which was very affordable. 
Now, the big ticket item for the month was, of course, our Airbnb. We paid $1,700, which is pretty high compared to local prices. And for that, we got basically a really nice living room. And the rest of the place was just okay. So the total amount we spent for a full month here was just over $2,300. Now, it gets really interesting when you compare what we spent here in Izmir to what we spent last month in Antalya. When we stayed in Antalya, we dined out every day for sure, if not twice a day. We rented cars a few times and we stayed in a very luxurious apartment. So if you want to find out how much we spent in Antalya, you can check it out by clicking on the next video right here.